Hi there, Jimmy here. Always good to have you back, Jimmy. Thank you. In today's episode, we're going to be focusing on different cloud functions. When building apps, developers rely on various cloud services, including storage, messaging, data analytics, and mobile development. As developers expand their use, seamless integration between these services can be a challenge. Very true. So today, we'll introduce Google Cloud Functions, a solution that allows you to connect services together and extend their behavior just by adding code. We'll also run through a quick demo of a self-paced lab that will allow you to create, deploy, and test a cloud function. Cloud Functions sounds pretty generic to me. So what is it really? Google Cloud Functions can be summarized as a serverless compute solution for creating event-driven applications. So let's define an event. An event could be something like a change to data in a database or files added to a storage system. You can create a response to that event with a trigger. A trigger is an indication that you're interested in a certain event or set of events. Adding a Cloud Function to the trigger allows you to respond to that event. Because the software and infrastructure are fully managed by Google, you only need to provide the code. A function can scale from a few requests to millions per day without any work from you. Click here to view a great introduction by our product manager, Jason Polites, about building serverless applications with Google Cloud Functions. So what can you do with Cloud Functions? Let's look at some examples we can all relate to. All right, I've got one. You know when you subscribe to a newsletter Hogwarts number one fan, and you magically get an email delivered to your inbox? Yep, that's a trigger for a cloud function. Developers can also take advantage of cloud functions to offload resource-intensive work that wouldn't be practical to run on a user's device. An example could be to write a function that upon upload of an image to a storage bucket, a thumbnail of the image is created and then saved in another bucket. That's another great example, Jimmy. Thank you. And of course, there are many opportunities to integrate with third-party services and APIs, too. Now to Quick Labs. The Cloud Functions Lab is available for use with the command line as well as through the Google Cloud Platform Console. You can check out the links to start the Quick Labs here. In both labs, you will create a cloud function, deploy and test the function, and view logs. So far in the lab, we've created a cloud function based on an HTTP trigger and deployed it. Once deployed, you can test a function. Provide a triggering event. In this case, a simple hello world message. You can see the success of the tested function in the output field. You can easily see the logs for your function. Well, there we have it. Thanks for watching our quick video on Google Cloud Functions. Don't forget to keep visiting our on-air webinar series, Quick Labs, and our blogs. All the links are below. You can also learn more about Cloud Functions through our on-demand courses on Coursera. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Last week, we discussed Google Kubernetes Engine and how it can easily scale, deploy, and automate your application. Check out the video and the Quick Lab demo here.